grab a weight, grab a chair, because today's video is all about the subject of the dose response to training volume in the context of muscle growth. Among the evidence-based training community, it has generally been accepted that training volume is a fundamentally important aspect of a resistance training program that guides the level or degree of muscle growth. A recent publication titled Evidence-Based Guidelines for Resistance Training Volume to Maximize Hypertrophy made a statement that there is compelling evidence that resistance training volume is a primary driver of hypertrophy, with higher volumes showing greater increases in muscle growth. And the authors of this review concluded that 10 sets per week per muscle group is a good starting point. This has led many folks within the evidence-based community to adopt the approach of more is best, where higher training volumes equals more gains. However, is it really as simple as these guidelines suggest? Now, if you're wondering what high training volumes might look like, there was a recent 2023 study that had participants in the highest training volume group performing up to 52 sets per week per muscle group in the final two weeks of the investigation. Now, if you're interested in learning more about that paper, please take a moment to watch the video that I did on this subject, which is available on my YouTube. So what is the trouble with the notion that more training volume equals more muscle growth? This simplification, like many others in the realms of nutrition and training, arises when people only read the abstracts of papers and do not delve into the actual data. Now, I understand why people do this as number one, interpreting data and statistics can be extremely challenging. And two, understandably, most people want to be able to quickly consume the findings of a paper so they can then apply these approaches to their own training or the programs of their clients. However, it is within the data where we start to see some possible red flags. Hence, why I make these videos. Also guys, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more evidence-based content just like this. All right, let's get back into it. What do I mean when there are some possible red flags in the high volume training data literature? While there is no doubt that the participants in these studies investigating the influence of training volume on muscle growth did observe increases in their muscle mass, as these outcomes align with the existing body of literature on muscle growth, my doubts arise from the level of muscle growth increases found in many of the most popular and commonly cited volume studies, which have shown a two to four fold increase in what's commonly observed. To put this in perspective, this level of muscle growth has only been observed with two other studies. One was retracted and the other's growth was comparable to the growth seen with the use of anabolic steroids. I personally still hold some reservations as to whether individuals engaged in natural or non-assisted resistance training would see the same magnitudes of muscle growth as those frequently reported in these studies. For me to confidently draw such definitive conclusions about the correlation between training volume and muscle growth, I would like to see these findings replicated in other labs for validation. What I am more inclined to consider is the possibility that the data being interpreted as muscle growth might in fact be attributed to excess swelling, resulting from these rigorous high volume training protocols. Such swelling could potentially distort the results making them appear to reflect significantly greater levels of muscle growth than were genuinely obtained. So what is being missed in the conversations around high volume training and muscle growth? While training volume is often touted as the most important training variable for predicting the muscle hypertrophy response to resistance training, it's crucial to recognize that not all volume is created equal. Extensive research has indicated that proximity to failure also plays a pivotal role in stimulating muscle growth. This aspect should be carefully considered, especially in the context of high volume training. Otherwise, you might find yourself performing multiple additional working sets solely for the purposes of increasing volume. In my opinion, pursuing volume without the requisite intensity to provoke a muscle growth response is an inefficient use of your time. So what does all of this mean? And what should we be taking away from the ongoing discussions around high volume training? I recommend approaching the current discussions regarding the notion that higher volume equates to more significant muscle growth with a degree of caution. Now, I'm not suggesting that higher training volumes within the appropriate context cannot lead to increased hypertrophy outcomes, but rather I believe that the extent to which volume plays a role may have been somewhat overstated. In fact, a far greater number of studies have shown it's entirely possible to achieve comparable muscle growth with a substantially lower training volume, reducing the risk of injury, increasing overall training enjoyment, and enhancing your time efficiency. These factors, I believe, are of paramount importance for the average gym goer. Moreover, one can potentially achieve superior muscle growth outcomes by focusing on the manipulation of other training variables 
within their training program. So guys, if you still have questions about training volume and how to apply volume to your own programming, I would highly recommend taking a look at my new book, The Complete Exercise Guide to Muscle Hypertrophy, which is available for purchase on my website. And guys, I forgot to give you one key detail. I recently collaborated on a manuscript that is currently out for review. So that should be accepted very soon. And I cannot wait to share the details with you. So please stay tuned for that. Actually, that publication is now live. So it actually was published on Monday uh, by the Journal of Trainology. So if you'd like to get your hands on that, you can definitely go and check it out. Um, I'm gonna pop the links in the description below and happy reading. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video and please don't forget to like the video if you found it helpful, subscribe to my channel and take a look at the descriptions below where you can learn more about what we've talked about today along with all my other products and one-on-one -on -one coaching services. I'll see you in my next video.